formerly Buster Life on MyT, is a Canadian commentary YouTuber with a Twitter following of 218 followers. Buster Life is facing some controversy for quote tweeting gore. Recently, a few weeks ago, I was scrolling through Twitter on Thursday morning, March 28th, and I saw a tweet from another commentary YouTuber named Sanyo, who tweeted this about Buster Live. The tweet that was made on March 27th says, I get the sentiment of Buster Live quote tweeting this stuff to people in commentary and general, but quote tweeting it was completely the wrong move. Possibly exposing more people to said gore in the replies and video accidentally. Just screenshot the tweet, crop the text, and warn people. I don't know anyone who wants to see it pop up randomly on their feed. Now the quote tweet is about this, which shows disgusting material. And Buster Live is getting criticized for this, as almost everybody in the commentary community was telling him to stop tweeting gore, and it seems that he didn't take the constructive criticism very well. Definitely don't watch this if gore fucks with you in any way, but this is beyond fucked up, man. The American government has done some atrocious shit. Now, I just would like to quickly add my two cents here and say that Haley Clinton did not do any of these things. Haley Clinton and Huma Abedin did not sexually assault, rape, or torture a child because someone else probably planted a cassette tape, made it all bloody to make it seem like that this is the little girl that was being raped and all that, when in reality, this video that I cannot show for obvious reasons is 100% fake. So I don't get why Buster would just immediately quote tweet something that is clearly not proven to be true. Because if it was, then Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin would have been in jail by now. So again, there's no evidence of Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin doing any of these things to a preteen girl to death. The bathtub that I saw in this video does not prove that it was Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin doing this to a girl in the bathtub. And in that video, it says that this is a photo of the aftermath of what happened to that young girl, claiming that she was allegedly raped, tortured, and cannibalized by Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin. Which, once again, there is no proof of that, according to factcheck.org and the ADL, there is no accurate evidence of that type of proof. Did a video of Hillary Clinton and Uma Abedi assaulting a young girl surface online? No, a story making that claim suggests the New York Pol City Police Department is investigating Clinton and Abedi. That's false. There is no evidence of a video showing former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her longtime aide Uma Abedin sexually assaulting and terrorizing a young girl. Despite a fictional tale being widely spread across social media, an April 16th story on the Petalgate.com, which is dedicated to such conspiracy theories, said the New York City Police Department dubbed the, the video the Rosetta Stone of information connecting senior politicians such as Clinton to an elite pedophile ring, echoing the debunked Pizzagate theory from 2016 that alleged Clinton and her aides were running a child sex ring out of a Washington, D.C. pizza shop. But the NYPD's Office of the Deputy Commissioner for Public Information confirmed in an email to factcheck.org that the department is not investigating such a video. There are also no credible news reports 
about the video, as was claimed in a similar story on YourNewsWire.com. YourNewsWire.com, a website known to traffic false news, claimed that the video of Clinton and Aberdeen had surfaced on the dark web, a collection of wet properties that hide their IP address for anonymity and where some illegal activity is known to occur. That story said the video was found on the laptop of former, former Democrat Representative Anthony Weiner, Aberdeen's estranged husband. He was convicted, convicted last year of sexting of an underage girl. While some Facebook users rightly flag the stories as false, the claims continue to amass a substantial audience in recent days, including more than 500,000 views on related YouTube videos that spread the rumor. None of these videos contain images of the alleged sex crime, just descriptions based on unnamed sources who purportedly view it. One YouTube video, which received nearly 190,000 views, attributes the existence of the horrific Hillary Clinton snuff film only to reliable sources who have viewed the material and confirmed the content is worse than any nightmare. A link to the YourNewsWire.com story posted on the popular Facebook group Donald Trump Commander-in-Chief 2020 garnered more than 1,500 shares. Some people who commented on the story questioned its veracity, but many others called for Clinton to be investigated and jailed. I read enough today to make me sick to my stomach. Monsters around us, but not for long, one woman wrote. The implications of such theories were evident in December 2016, when an armed 28-year-old man from North Carolina who believed the Pizzagate accounts opened fire inside the Washington, D.C. pizza shop named in the bogus stories. No injuries were reported. He pled guilty and was sentenced to four years in prison. Fazzled Drip, sometimes called Fazzled Rip, is a rumored dark red web snuff film showing Hillary Clinton and longtime aide Huma Abedi sexually assaulting and murdering a young girl, drinking her blood and taking turns wearing the skin from her face as a mask. The video was allegedly discovered on former Congressman Anthony Weiner's laptop, Weiner is Aberdeen's ex-husband, in a folder labeled Life Insurance and police officers who reportedly seen it were so horrified that they were driven to suicide. Conspiracy theorists have pointed to the video, which does not adequately exist to support long-standing conspiracy theories that politicians, celebrities, and other elites sexually abuse children and consume their remains. Buster Life then tweets a three-second video to Samuel to call his tweet cringe. Cringe. Bro thought he cooked with this response. It's a four second clip. The intent was not to cook. It was to express the sentiment that is expressed in the clip. You retarded, my boy. Listen, it's silly to think that getting criticism for tweeting gore is cringe. Why as a 20 year old would you quote tweet child gore, you weird cunt? Look, even if that was a child, but again, I already debunked it. There is no reason to tweet this out to literal people that follow you who have traumas from all of this. You're such a retard, lol. Buster Live continues to quote tweet a gore tweet which has now been deleted at the time of this recording saying, 
This kind of behavior needs to be met with the death penalty. Remove them from the gene pool. Stop reposting the shit. I just woke up. Then unfollow me, you snowflake. Jesus, bro. Y'all are straight weirdos. Literally just keep scrolling if you don't like what I tweet, you freaks. Okay, when someone is telling you that they don't want to see gore of any kind, that doesn't make them a little snowflake just because they follow you on Twitter. It's common decency. And it doesn't make them a snowflake for not wanting to scroll to see it on their timeline. I'm sorry, Buster. This is twice today. And from Sleepy's tweet, it shows a screenshot of Buster Life on YT getting muted because he doesn't want to see gore tweets from his timeline. And rightfully so, because the way that Buster Life tweets it sometimes is pretty brutal to, like, be brave enough to see things like this. I don't give a fuck. You do you, and I'll do me me when I get dislike for quote tweeting child core. Literally just do you and I'll do me. That's it. Doing you is quote tweeting gore? Weird. Look, it's not okay to disregard what some of the well-minded commentary YouTubers are asking for. What a great way to respond to criticism about quote tweeting gore, Buster as finest. People didn't want to see it on their feet in any capacity and it didn't expect you to quote tweet it, let alone double down, be naive, and then quote tweet different violent videos. Apparently it makes me and others too face for expressing this as we were friendly previous. What Senyo means is that he and Buster Live were chatting on a podcast known as Trash Talk, and it was probably the first time I watched a portion of the podcast on a live stream because they were just wrapping up here. And I did not know this was happening because I never always check my notifications. I've waited for the live stream to end on Buster Live's YouTube channel because I didn't subscribe to Trash Talk last year until recently in February. At the time of this recording, I found that Trash Talk had to unlist or private their video due to Buster Live blocking Samuel for criticizing Buster the controversial choice. I scrolled on the Trash Talk YouTube channel and I saw that it was not public anymore. Okay, so then Jacob Tree tweeted a reply showing after he made a tweet criticizing Buster Life, Buster Life then blocked him. Met Mouth strikes again. Met Mouth is crazy. Being honest, I agree. Seeing Gore videos shouldn't be a daily for anyone. Not saying shock media shouldn't exist, obviously it has served good purpose. Now it does just feel like glorifying death rather than being informative. Exactly, and I feel that if you're gonna post something or retweet or quote tweet something horrible for other people to watch, at least be more informative to your peers on what's going on rather than praising death. There's no need to quote tweet this if you're not being informative on what that is and you shouldn't f just firmly believe a random Twitter user who's nobody that tweeted out gore from six years ago. Can we blackball these people? Sorry you're too much of a snowflake to watch kids get stabbed. Sounds like a well-adjusted guy. You can't handle watching children die? You're such a snowflake. This retard. Apparently. Wow, guys, small commenter did something fucking stupid. What a surprise! This is what we get for letting Canadians in the community. Well, let's not go that far. If you don't like my quote tweeting of gore, then you are just a soy boy beta snowflake. If you can't candle heat, then get out of the kitchen. Yeah, that pretty much sums it all up. If you can't handle the criticism, then don't be on the internet. Buster Life on YT hates snowflakes. Grrr. But I love snowflakes. What does he have against the beauty of nature that falls from clouds? On another note, we as a society need to do better when it comes to the meaning of the word snowflake, 
and not just replace the meaning of the snowflake as an insult. At Buster Lightman YT, you are a loser. Of course, people wouldn't like it if you tweet fucking gore. There are not snowflakes for that, Almeo. Found this because of Ace Howard, by the way. The quote tweet that Buster Life made under a tweet that is now deleted is by a piece of shit named Andy Nogo. Caption says, a graphic bystander video captured a mask black male stabbing a person repeatedly on a moving train in London. The train was traveling between Shortlands and Beckenham Station towards Victoria Station, a nearby school was placed on lockdown. I'm starting to see why the commentary community is upset at Buster Live on YouTube for doing this. They didn't have to look to be fair. They could have read the title and been like, hey, I don't want to click on that. Okay, yeah, that's true, but we're talking about a Twitter timeline, not an article from a website. When you click on a Twitter timeline, you see all the tweets that you're notified from and you scroll down to like each tweet that you see and retweet as well because the quote tweet or the retweet has already been done by someone that you follow on Twitter. And if they see a tweet about gore, then obviously they are going to see it. Okay, so here's my Twitter timeline here. I click on this. And I check the tweets from accounts I follow on Twitter. Then I take my time to enjoy the moment, to like a tweet, whether it's from Boston Celtics, I see a local news sports media account retweeting their journalist's tweet. I scroll down and I happen to like the tweet of them practicing for game time. Then I see a tweet from CBS News and I liked it. Then I keep scrolling down. I keep scrolling. I go to a Team C article. I happen to like that tweet. Then another tweet from CBS News. I happen to like that tweet. I scroll down from now this impact like that tweet. Then I scroll down to NBC News. Then I like that tweet. Scroll down again. There's Team C. I keep liking that tweet and keep scrolling down. I scroll down to the recount and I like that tweet. And a news article about Caitlin Clark. So I like that tweet. And this is where I stopped right there. Because if I do not like a fish being hooked by a parasite, then I simply do not like that tweet. But it is on my timeline, which is why I cannot unsee it. So not clicking on a timeline doesn't help because you're going to be followed by accounts that are going to post this anyway. Do you understand where I'm coming from on this? When people see your tweets on their timeline, they are not just gonna immediately click off of your tweet because they're not on your tweet yet. They're on their timeline, already seeing your tweet. That's the difference between from that versus literally clicking on the tweet itself. And then I found Buster Live's tweet from Sleepy who says, LMAO, Bro, what is this? Y'all annoyed for me quote tweeting gore content with a trigger warning literally last week just to quote tweet a motherfucker doing heroin is kind of crazy. The heroin doesn't have any blood coming out. Big difference. And I don't have any problem with anyone giving a trigger warning. Nobody in the commentary community has a problem with you 
giving a trigger warning. The issue that they had is that you quote tweeted gore on your account. They can still see it, Buster. People turned on their notifications for a reason. Now, if you're going to say to people that follow you, don't watch this, they are still technically going to watch it because you tweeted this video on their timeline. Thus, it makes you look like a hypocrite when you tell them not to watch it when they have no other choice. Now, as a viewer of Buster Live, I have seen people on Twitter in the past shit on him for the sake of showing his face where he doesn't have any teeth or when he was criticizing Dr Jack's films by saying that he's a gigantic pussy for asking YouTube to demonetize Sniper Wolf's channel for doxing or to suspend her entirely and even educating Buster Live for the worst take about HRT when he, at the time of last year, tagged Keffels in a tweet. And while some of these takes against him are quite valid at times, making fun of someone for having pure teeth isn't criticism, it's just cyberbullying. That being said, the valid criticism he shouldn't block any of his peers on Twitter for is over retweeting or quote tweeting gore. Now, I understand that you felt the need to do that, Buster, but it's not warranted to double down and have this seven year old boy mindset of demanding, I want ice cream now, 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 just to be badly engaging with the constructive criticism you received. If you could have just said to Sango, sleepy and anyone else who criticized you. Okay, I'll do that. My bad. I didn't mean to make my peers uncomfortable. Instead of rudely saying, I don't give a flying fuck. You do you and I'll do me. Then the situation didn't need to be escalated further than it already has. There is no need to block people who have a legitimate concern about the wrong way you're doing. It doesn't make these people retarded, weirdo, snuggly freaks for rightfully criticizing you. Because the only people who are weirdo, snuggly freaks who love tweeting gore are people who have a weird fixation on seeing gore on a daily and seeing gore every time and retweeting and quote tweeting it on someone's timeline is the equivalent of watching too much porn. Whether you did it in the past two years or five years and counting is extremely unhealthy as it can affect your behavior and mind on how you act with people in real life and online. If I may, the advice that I would give to you is don't push people away and stop trying to react to the situation poorly. Take the time to reflect on yourself and think about how you respond. Don't lash out when making petty comebacks to quote tweet someone and be more mindful. At the end of the day, I do hope that you'll turn your life around and improve yourself to be a better person.